That was that was breathtaking. It was so there, pretty. I it's it sounded like there was a quote from some classical piece in there, and I can't put my finger on it. It definitely well, had a classical feel. I I looked up the the song just Google that title, and there's a few songs by other people. I, I don't know if that's it. Um, talking about the, the classical nod to me, I was going to say, um, wasn't this called the Godfather theme once upon a time? Um, well, I mean, I, I kept hearing that. that it, it had a whole lot of that quality to it. Yeah, it was really you know? dark and foreboding. Hello and welcome to The Sound Live. My name is Matthew and I am your host. I have an incredible show lined up for y'all today. is going to be here in just a minute but right now let me introduce my uh, first two special guests starting off with jennifer valiquette how you doing today jennifer great how are you i'm doing great jennifer is a, a, a fellow music teacher like me and jennifer is a saxophonist and flutist so i'm excited yeah. about your pick today and um you've been you've been doing all kinds of new projects haven't you yeah, I just did a collab with Leap yesterday. That was fun. Um, I did Kiss, Kiss from a Rose. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand your thumbnail, why it had like Terminator or something on it. I, oh, it's Batman <laughs> because because that song is actually from, they used that in the movie. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, okay. it's Batman. <laughs> it, okay, I, I thought it looked more like Terminator to me. I didn't, oh, I sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Cool. And also with me today, I have Kyle Walls. Hey, hey. How you doing, Kyle? Kyle's a <laughs> Dude. singer, songwriter, and a really cool guy. What's new in your world? So I, I teach, and today was the first day with students. So it went it went really well. I've been at this 26-ish year, something like that. So it, it's been a couple minutes, as the kids say. The big one of today, the big one, a leap, a leap. All right, we're going to be getting in here to this new uh, Leap reaction. I have not listened to this. I have not watched it. It's been painful for me to be waiting for my uh, Leap fix here. At this point, I am uh, an admitted a Leaper, a Leap junkie. I, I'm not going to a Leap Anonymous because I don't see any reason to quit. I'm, I'm, I'm all about a Leap. And I'm just gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep going with the elite bata because um, I haven't been disappointed once, and that's really that's a big statement. That's a big statement. I've done so many, you know, um, so many reactions, so many collabs with them. Just you know, I got this giant playlist. It's over seventy videos now of all the stuff I've done with yeah. about this one finger style guitarist. You know, and it's just because, like, seriously, like, I, I haven't put on one and been like, okay, well, you know, that was just okay. Alip Bata's brand new song, Pogabluk. Pogabluk? Is that how you say it? a good guess. Good guess, yeah. P Pogabluk? Okay. Um, I don't know what this is. Um, the, the, the chat, the, uh, not the chat, the comments were suggesting that it might be a cover of some kind, but usually hmm. when Alip does a cover that usually says cover guitar or whatever after it so yeah i think it's probably an original but i don't know i could be wrong you guys know so tell me in the chat tell me in the comments and of course like always i do the chat at the end i yeah. will shout out to everyone it has all his links on it so i assume it's it's original oh his originals are some of my favorites i really yeah. love his writing all right so, Kopi Mana Kopi, good morning to all my leapers. I might still be a little early for you, but, um, you know, I'm just having my last sip of coffee for the day here. Mm. I do that love my gold. gold. That wasn't a sip. <laughs> Man, you should see me with a, with a Scotch Ale. All right. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> and so, without further ado, Musicians Panel reacts to... A leap Bata's new song, Pugabluk. Here we go.
was that was breathtaking. It was so there, pretty. I it's it sounded like there was a quote from some classical piece in there, and I can't put my finger on it. It definitely well, had a classical feel. I I looked up the the song just Google that title, and there's a few songs by other people. I, I don't know if that's it. Um, talking about the, the classical nod to me, I was going to say, um, wasn't this called the Godfather theme once upon a time? Um, well, I mean, I, I kept hearing that. that it, it had a whole lot of that quality to it. Yeah, it was really you know? dark and foreboding. But yeah. it was just, I love the way the composition was just so stitched throughout. And, you know, we were just talking about, you know, like, like, in the very last transition, there was a part where I maybe heard a couple of finger squeaks or something, like, a little bit. Like, there was a part where it wasn't, like, you know, there was a spot where it was 99%, you know? And and, and it's, it was just extra beautiful to me because, you know, he then he went back into this other part that he'd already played before with a couple of modifications. But it's like, it reminds me that, you know, he's human. You know, like, it's really important. It's really important well, because otherwise well, it's really discouraging, you know? Yeah. Well, people always, <laughs> that's something I've noticed doing reactions, you know, and, you know, like, like with Dimash and stuff that people like, I mean, they, these are just humans making music. It's not magic. It's not like something absolutely crazy. Yes, you can be born and kind of get it better than other people, just like math or visual arts or anything else that anybody can do on this planet you know um and you know i i'm always amazed at people that, that pretend like oh they must be you know they must come from on high to be Heavenly. able to do this like, that's yeah. like you no know, just, we're all human yeah there's plucking strings man <laughs> they're just people been doing that for as long as they've been stringed instruments you know and so many harmonics know. in that melody yeah. The, you know, and then he switched to the B section and would throw that little behind the nut bend. And I would love how he does those. I, I wonder, I wonder if he has like a filter uh, be, because, you know, like you got to have a melody that hits that certain kind of slurred note on, you know, in a certain range. Right. I, I wonder if, if he always adjusts something. He's like, I got to do my G string bend. You know, I wonder if he kind of thinks like that because um, it's always he almost always does the G. You know, because you can see it sometimes, like from his, from the oils from his finger, it's uh, t the metal's tarnished from doing that bend up there. Well, those things are dangerous. You can break your strings. You can throw your guitar out of tune, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can hurt your finger. So mm -hmm. you know, like I'm, I'm always impressed by those. And even if he's doing it mostly on the G string, okay, hey, it's better than I can do. Oh well, yeah, you know, I, I, um, yeah. I wasn't talking well, I was, about the te technique. Okay. I was thinking more does does he look at a song and go, "Oh, hey, the melody yeah, has yeah. a slur between this range, so I can do that thing." Because I, I mean, that's so. that's part of his signature. Yeah. I think he hears the bend and then he just does it however he knows it does needs to do because you know he does all kinds of bends, slides, and everything. Well, true, um, but I mean that, but that G string bend that's one of his signature moves, and it I does mean, have a is, very I very agree. unique sound. It does. Uh, I don't know if it sounds unique. I mean, that's that's his signature. He puts I it agree. in. You know, I mean, bending a note is bending a note. It sounds I mean, different than a regular bend is what I mean, like. I get you. I mean, it has a different kind of curve to how the pitch change. Right. You know? Yeah. And so it he, just gives it he slightly has different a few signatures that he, he kind of puts in in there, even with the covers that he does. And, yeah, I mean... He's good at what he does, and he's obviously got a ton of views. But, yeah, I, I know what you're saying, Kyle. It's like, yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe you could do something different. Yeah. Well, it'd be like or if... So, uh, or, like, or am I putting words in your mouth? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I mean, it, it's cool what, what he does. I, I don't know if it's so much, you know, like do something different. I was thinking, like, take Eddie Van Halen's eruption and that fret tapping sequence. You know, I it would be like if if he would use that same kind of pattern and and I forget the particular notes. Um, well, what, what is it like a a seven and a three? I forget what which intervals those are that he's tapping out. But it'd be like if he did that same thing. It's like oh, here's a sequence. You know, between 
C1 and, and, you know, C2 that I can do that, that thing. I, I just wonder, you know, how much thought goes into it at that level, or if he's just going, this is something I can sing. I always played a melody around these notes. So then it's, you know, just something he can do in any song. You know, I'm just curious about that, that pattern approach, you know? He's a leap is, is he's, he's sort of an enigma, you know, he doesn't want to, you know, um, I mean, I mean, he has a few friends that he works with, you know, but um, yeah. he's not, well, he's, yeah, he, I don't know. I, I, I'm i excited, man, because yeah. I liked I, it. I want to listen to that again and oh, again. Yeah. That's I, cool. It was sort of mellow. It was like a almost lullaby-ish kind of thing, you know, like at the beginning. Yeah. Um, almost Godfather-ish, you were saying, sort of dark and foreboding. And we have a comment here. Shout out to Agung Sukarjo. Sukarjo. Pagabluk is a Javanese word meaning plague. Some people translate it as calamity. The song expressed his concern to ongoing pandemic situations in Indonesia. Okay, so it is an original. All right. Yes, it, it is totally sure. original. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, and I mean, that's why it sort of had a dark, heavy kind of feeling to it, I guess, you know, because it was expressing concern about the pandemic, which we all have, yeah. um, you know, it's, well, it's and, kind of a nutso situation. Yeah, and especially because I, I think that area of the world was like in another lockdown or might still be uh, not too long ago. It, it, it's interesting with his original music. Um, I, I was thinking about this in general the other day and, and throw this kind of idea out there to you two. Um, it seems that artists that have folklore to them, that that's kind of like the signature trait of, are you quote famous or something like that? And I was thinking of all the folklore with Ali. He's got a regular job. He just plays guitar for fun. And it's like, well then why is he putting out original music and, you know, doing Spotify links and all this other stuff? I mean, I, you know, and, and I'm not questioning the folklore. I just find it very interesting that people have created this figure, you know, and think about any quote famous musical figure. You have folklore, you know, like, like, like Metallica. Well, oh, when Metallica got together in the Bay Area, they could out drink anybody. I mean, you could go on and on about all these stories, you know, Lemmy from Motorhead, et cetera, et cetera. And it's interesting to me how all this folklore around a leap has, has formed you know, and, and it's interesting because there's, you know, some indications like, well, you know, it's he seems to be doing music for more than just fun, which is fine. I mean, more power to him. I mean, I, I would if I was in his shoes, if, if I had some songs start getting millions of views and things, that'd be cool. But it's just interesting to me, that folklore aspect. Well, and, and let's just look at it this way, okay? Let's just look at it this way. When you look at YouTube the way it is today with the right to monetize addendum that they added to the terms of service why not collect the money from it because if you don't they're just going to collect it anyway it's not like you're going to be sparing your fans the ads like it used to be it used to be if you didn't monetize your videos didn't have ads that is right. sadly at least going to be no longer the case because YouTube is like you know what this is wasted revenue we could have so um more power to them, right? Yeah. You put your copyright claim on your music, right? Absolutely. That's why I'm playing my music at the beginning and when we go to take a pee break, right? Yeah, I was just thinking like his folklore mm -hmm. is has almost the opposite idea of that. He's just some person. He's a truck driver. He has this grand gift, etc. I'm not saying he's not talented. You know, obviously, I, you know, I enjoy him and 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 appreciate his talents. I just find it interesting that people focus on this folklore aspect, while there's this other side that they choose to not you know, uh, uh, recognize or acknowledge. It's interesting. Kind of like when Bieber went from being the, the cute teen idol to being the kind of, um, you know, jerk in the media, you know, and was going through this kind of growing period, you know, um, and it took a lot of people to kind of, uh, you know, his fans to acknowledge, oh, he's, he's growing up. He's, he's changing. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, Going back to uh, yeah, what you were saying about uh, people, uh, you know, like like 
essentially like deifying um, musicians. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're human and they're having human experiences and they feel human feelings. Yeah. And it's, it's just, I, I mean, yeah, I have my idols and all that, but it's like, I mean, you know, that they're not, they're, yeah, they're, they're not gods. They're, they've had to practice for years upon years upon years to get, mm. get that way. And I, I really would like to, that's something I want, I kind of want to break down with people is like the, like the, the idol, I mean, like the uh, deifying, I mean, cause it's, I mean, yeah, it's just, we're all just humans and you can do this too. Yeah. Right on, you know, and, and it's my daughter, she other day, she, she does this. My daughter will do this. It's, it's sort of a tangent, but, but it relates. She said, dad, if you could have any superpower in the whole world, what would it be? And I said, I want to have ultra focus so that when I'm playing music or singing, I want to be able to be a thousand times more expressive and never miss a note unless I choose to. <laughs> and she's like, what? 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 You wouldn't rather just like be able to fly or something? She's 13, so you can yeah. imagine. Like... <laughs> Like, no, like, that would be the power that I want. And she said, but you can, like, already almost do that. I was like, well, almost, almost, but I can't do that. Not not all the way, you know? I've, I, I, I've been working at it for literally over 25 years on stage. I've been freaking playing. I, I used to get paid more when I was in my early 20s to play than I do now, you know? It's crazy, mm -hmm. like, how just everything has worked out. And yet, you know, I was 100% sure, yes. That is the power that I would want to have, you know, right? <laughs> Why not? The, the, I mean, the United States music industry is kind of ageist, though. Oh, uh, totally. It's horrible. Slightly. Yeah, and I mean, if you, you know, if you go to over to other countries, it's it's not as bad. I mean, yeah, you have your young your young uh, musicians and artists and all that, but you also have you, you in the in the culture and a lot of these cultures mm -hmm. that you know they they appreciate the con contributions from uh you know the older generations and you know that's like uh, that's more of a thing i mean i in the u.s we have a very uh you know like a sense of immediacy on our in pop culture in general and in art and it's honestly one reason why i can't make a lot of money doing progressive metal in the u.s unless i <laughs> yeah yeah well at least time in history at least i mean you know like that that was a possibility at one point in history but um unless you're like there are some you, a few that have done it they have but it's very rare and it's uh i i would i would say it's like it does take you know like a multifaceted approach which uh you know, not a lot of people have that. Going back around, all the way around to a leap, th this all comes out of the discussion of his humility and, you know, money. And, dude, what if it's a situation where, you know, because, you know, in America, you basically have to have two incomes to survive. What if, like, you know, his family works, means that he has to, like, work as a truck driver and then he also gets a little bit of money from YouTube so That's that maybe cool. someone else in his family doesn't have to work so much. Like, well, you know, I think he I wonder, should get paid. He's that good. Well, yeah, I, I wonder if his folklore will change. I wonder if people will say, yeah, he was just a truck driver and then his music started to take off. I mean, I haven't heard the narrative change about this story about him. Everyone's like, oh, he has these great gifts. Oh, he just does this. But thing, something's changed. And, and I'm just curious to see if that story is going to change, too. Cool. That's all. I'm just curious. I'm a curious dude. Right on. Well, yeah. and you know, it's it's just yeah. I mean, if he wants to continue working as a forklift driver, that's great. You know, I, that's if he likes his job. And he Was it a forklift quit. or a truck cool. driver? I've heard. I've heard he <laughs> heard a couple drives a roads. forklift. That's okay. what I've heard. Yeah. Anyway. yeah I, and and that's one of the things is you only go by what you hear, and that's to me that that is probably the biggest drive is the mystique, the person that we think he is has driven so much attention to him you know 
you know, that because that, things like that are always interesting to me. You know, how do things take off, you know, and, you, you know, just, just how do things happen, you know, and it's always fascinating. So definitely wonderful. I really enjoyed that song. I'm going to be listening to it again. It was really nice. And, you know, it, like I said, you know, the, the, there was just that one or two little spots towards the end in the transition where it was like as he was playing it was just the teeniest little bit of f- either finger noise or maybe he just didn't hit a note quite perfectly fingered where his finger was slightly a millimeter different or whatever and it just came out not as beautiful as all the millions of notes before it and i just love that because you know it shows it was one take it was live he did play that that was real this is not you know he's he's freaking milli vanillying over something that he did earlier, but he didn't record it, the video of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like it was, and I, I love that because, yeah. you know, like it was four it, minutes straight through. And that seems, of you, if you're not a player, you, you might not realize how difficult that is, you know, with like that much music and all those changes. And it's like, you know, how many times have I been been in a song and then it's like i'm almost to the end and then i hit one thing wrong and it's like damn it (laughs) (laughs) yeah right on well i want to make sure everybody subscribe to evelyn holland jennifer's music page and kyle walls i really appreciate my special guests you guys are awesome i really hope that you guys uh continue with your all with your creative pursuits and i'll see you guys here next week make sure you guys all thumb up this video share out the stream and subscribe to everybody here including matthew's music lesson studio and i just wanted to give you all an update here um, the studio definitely still needs your help a lot but i'm starting to receive a little bit of help from you all so thank you cool. uh, keep it coming Matthews Music Lesson Studio.com. I am having a crazy special for online music lessons. Back to crazy. special. No, seriously. $20 for a half hour lesson that you get to record and keep on your computer. That's crazy cheap, dude. Look anywhere else at the prices. They're way higher than that. $20 for a half hour music lesson that you record. I do voice. I do all forms of guitar. I do all forms of saxophone. I do all forms of clarinet. Okay? I do piano. I do all forms of ukulele. So whatever you all want to do, Matthew's Music Lesson Studio.com. And of course, I need you to help me. Everybody on Patreon, if you're interested in these weekly bonus videos we've got coming out, you got to go to patreon.com slash Matthew's Music Lesson Studio and donate at least $1 per month. That's a quarter per video. Come on, that's so cheap. LiberaPay.com slash Matthew's Music. You can support the studio. It's a non-profit. That means they don't take nothing. So I get the highest percentage. That's a weekly donation. Please sign up at LiberaPay.com slash Matthew's Music to help the studio stay online and grow. Or you can buy me a coffee right now at buymeacoffee.com slash Matthew's Music. You, I need a coffee for tomorrow for cold brew for in the morning for when we do the sound again. You could, you could be the one that helps me. Get that coffee. Help him. Yes. And, of course, you can also tip me on Venmo at Venmo at Matthews Music. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you next time on The Sound Live. <laughs>